Uh, good morning, everyone. Just while you're settled in and speaking to your colleagues, please, please feel free to continue. I'm just going to do a, a quick recap um, for those of you um, who are interested. So yesterday we had, I'll just start with the parallel sessions first, um, and then I'll continue from there. So in our parallel sessions at the end of the day, we had sessions on governance and systems evaluations, um, as well as uh, on the DHIS2 toolkits. So um, in the for those of you who maybe weren't in one session or the other, just do a quick recap. And these resources are, of course, uploaded in the folder um, for you to review. So um, in this room, we had this session on governance and systems evaluations. And this is an example here of the governance model that we discussed in that session. And I'm not going to get into all the details at this moment. Um, but you can see here that we recommend this kind of three-layered model Oh, let me get rid of this on my screen. Sorry, guys. I'm also hosting the <laughs> Zoom. Um, so um, we have these three three layers that we recommend: the governance committee, the operational committee, and a core technical team. Um, what we're basically just recommending is a model that can be used to then, you know, be modified in country. So it doesn't mean you follow this exact approach, but we want to recommend some type of well coordinated process with structured kind of roles, responsibilities, and you know. Um, areas where you can report through the chain. So you want to be clear on who can make decisions in your system, on who's responsible for maintaining your system, on who kind of manages and evaluates the progress of that system on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so we do have a full presentation on this. If you weren't part of this session, um, you can have a look at this, and it goes into much more detail on, on each of these um, uh, mechanisms within this committees and roles and what the responsibilities are. Um, and the typical kind of skills um, that these teams should have. Okay. Um, we also discussed here in this room uh, systems evaluations, um, sort of focused on what we call the maturity assessment, which is an assessment for kind of uh, looking at your DHIS2 system and, and determining kind of um, what potential priority challenges might be and, and where support might be needed and where to focus on. In particular, there's a large kind of piece on the foundational areas that can set you up for success um, when working with DHIS2. Um, so we use this to kind of create reports and send this off to partners. And we kind of use this to then engage with partners on discussions. So we have documented the challenges in our system that need improvement. And this can be both at the foundational level, maybe issues with infrastructure, with investment, et cetera, as well as kind of at the kind of, you know, more progression, more progression um, within your DHIS2 system. So maybe specific problems with a tracker program, uh, specific problems um, with a data quality process, for example. Okay. And just real quick, now we didn't talk about these necessarily, but I just wanted to give a quick plug because I think they're also helpful. Um, we have other tools to help you assess your system that are a bit more technical. Um, this is an example of a DHIS2 metadata assessment. Um, this will allow you to, in quite some detail, assess the kind of health of your database. It returns a number of validation measures that checks on how your configuration um, is made and if there are significant problems with those. Um, it, it gives you a detailed response as to what those issues are. It allows you to then kind of look at these, prioritize them, and fix them. So what I've done, or, or what I will do in a moment, sorry, is post the uh, link to this resource so you can have a look, um, but uh, this is very useful to kind of assess the health of your system and help you determine maybe where some support for uh, supporting your configuration might lie, because if these things end up kind of uh, being there for a very long time, it can result in numerous challenges um, for your system. Okay, and real quickly, another type of assessment tool that we have developed is for capacity building. Um, we have a detailed capacity building needs assessment, which identifies different roles in your system. Um, it, we have job descriptions for each of these roles, and then we have the types of skills um, that we feel these people should have. Um, it allows you to kind of assess where people's skills currently are, and then evaluate where you need them to be. And there's a detailed list of skills for various roles. Um, within this, and I have uploaded this to the folder already um, for your reference. Um, tied to this, we have a uh, planning template. Zoomed in much too much. Okay. And this uh, basically goes into development of a core team, what the different roles are in that core team, 
types of training they should receive um, and their job descriptions, um, budgeting for these activities as well. So it's kind of a full suite of tools to help you assess kind of what your learning needs are, what your capacity development needs are, what your human resource needs might be, um, and putting that together. Once again, it's a template. It's meant to be modified to suit your needs. Um, but I have uploaded both of these resources to the Google Drive as well. We didn't talk about them so much yesterday, but if you do have any questions, um, I, I've been writing most of these documents, so please feel free to um, come have a chat with me if you have any questions about these. Okay, and once again, like I said, these are these uh, resources have been uploaded to the Google Drive. Okay, for the remainder of the review, um, we'll just do a little Mentimeter here. So uh, if you guys can all just join the the Mentimeter, either by scanning the code or entering the URL and entering the code, um, then we can get started. Just have a small quiz. I'll just give everyone a moment to join. Okay, let's actually get started now, okay? And we'll try to get started by nine. All right, so you have 20 seconds to answer the question. You'll see the question in a moment, all right? Okay, so how many HISP groups are part of the HISP Asia Hub? Okay, so about half the people got it. So there's seven part of the hub. We have uh, uh, Sri Lanka, our hosts. We have India, Bangladesh. Um, we have Indonesia. We have Pakistan. We have our, our new group, uh, MENA, as well. And then uh, Vietnam, as well. All right. Okay. So we'll see who wins at the end. Okay, second question. So going forward, how many major releases of DHIS2 will occur per year? Okay, so if you remember from uh, Phil and Austin's presentation last year, they discussed moving to a model where we'll have one major release every year. So 240, 241, 242, or sorry, not two, 40, 41, 42. Sorry, I have to get used to that myself. Um, and then they'll also support the previous releases via patches and other types of support, okay? So just keep that in mind for your general planning that there will only be one major release um, every year going forward. Okay, let's see who's in the lead now. Okay, nothing's changed. To update an existing app following a continuous release cycle, I need to upgrade my DHIS2 version. Okay, good. So yes, this is false, right? So um, Phil and Austin discussed some of the new models and what the ad advantages of that are, of course. If you upgrade just an app within your system, you are able to go back if something's wrong. It doesn't change any of the underlying data model. Um, so this is something that will be supported going forward with a number of the apps within DHIS2. Okay. Hmm. 
So you'll see the image on your screen. Okay, this is the new data entry app. It has already been released in beta form. It'll, the image will be much bigger on your device. Wow, good. Okay, many of you got this. Okay, so this is true. You can, for example, log into the Play demo and have a look, or if you're on a more recent release of DHIS2, um, you can also have a look at that as well. I believe 39 and 40, though you can correct me if I'm wrong. All right, looks like we'll have some change in the leader. So Timur Leste used DHIS2 for managing an SIA. Okay, yeah, good. Most of you got this, right? They also used it for adverse events. They also have other immunization data in there as well. So if you have some questions about that, you can talk to them about uh, their implementation. Pakistan is using DHIS2 to manage IDSR. Through again, okay. So we had a, a nice pre presentation for Pakistan. They discussed both their HMIS um, as well as their IDSR system. Um, so they have a number of initiatives there, and uh, you can review their presentation um, for more information. Okay. Which version of DHIS2 is Nepal currently using? Okay, bit of a divide. Yeah, so the reason I bring this up, Nepal has an interesting challenge. They're using a different calendar system, so they're currently on DHIS 230. Um, you can talk to them more about that challenge. It's, a, it's an interesting and unique use case, yeah. All right, let's see here now. Okay, last question. Hopefully you guys were paying attention. How do you say thank you in Bahasa Indonesia? The last slide in the Indonesia presentation. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Okay, let's see who the winner is. It's tight. All right, so who's who's Chog? Ah, please. Okay, so just a quick uh, reminder of our sessions for today. So we'll start the morning. Um, with LMIS, so I'll ask my colleague Breno um, from the University of Oslo to come up. We'll continue with security, and we'll have companion sessions, parallel sessions on this later today. The rooms are indicated in the agenda. 
After the tea break, after Breno and Michael present on LMISN security respectively, we'll have our country presentations, and then we'll end the day. Um, I'll present on data quality, and John uh, will present on climate health. All right. If there are any questions about the rooms, locations, or the topics, um, please feel free to contact any of the organizers, and we're more than happy to help you out. Well, thank you very much.